His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Ambassador Muhammad bin Ali Al Ghatam on the occasion of the issuance of the royal decree appointing him head of Bahrain's diplomatic mission in Qatar with the title of Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary, where he took the legal oath before His Majesty the King. His Majesty congratulated the Ambassador, hailing his competency in carrying out his national responsibilities. He wished him success in carrying out his diplomatic duties and asked him to convey his greetings to the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, and his wishes of prosperity to the people of Qatar. His Majesty the King hailed the deep rooted fraternal relations between the two countries and the mutual keenness on bolstering them to achieve the interests and aspirations of both people. Ambassador Al Ghatam thanked His Majesty the King and pride in the Royal Trust, affirmed that His Majesty's directives are a motivation to exert further efforts to bolster cooperation and fraternal ties with Qatar. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed bin Salman al Musallam, praised the bilateral relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Federal Republic of Brazil and the ties and common interests that bring the two countries together in various fields. This came during the Speaker's meeting with the Secretary General of the Arab Brazilian Chamber of Commerce in the Federal Republic of Brazil in the capital Brasilia. Alim Salam stressed the keenness of the Council of Representatives to support, strengthen the economic partnership and increasing trade exchange between the two countries, which last year amounted to $1.5 billion, noting the advanced economic legislative system that the Kingdom of Bahrain enjoys. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives explained that the visit yielded many positive results, which will developed through joint efforts to activate agreements and memorandums of cooperation and understanding in order to increase the trade and investment volumes. For his part, the Secretary General of the Arab Brazilian Chamber of Commerce affirmed his pride in the distinguished relations between the Federal Republic of Brazil and the Kingdom of Bahrain and the development of growth and progress they are witnessing in all the fields. The Council of Representatives delegation praised the level of distinguished relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Federal Republic of Brazil and their friendly people, and the special care and attention these relations enjoy from His Majesty the King and the President of the Federal Republic of Brazil. This came during the parliamentary delegation's meeting with the head of the Presidential Investment Encouragement Program in Brazil, Marcos Cavalcanti, during which the most prominent challenges of the global economy were discussed. The two sides praise the growth and the volume of intra-trade between the two countries. Under the chairmanship of the Minister of Sustainable Development and Chief Executive Officer of the Economic Development Board, Noor bint Ali Al Khleif, the Economic Development Board concluded its strategic visit to the United States of America, which began on June the 10th. Its agenda included holding four discussion sessions within the Transformation Agenda Series, which is organized by the Economic Development Board in cooperation with the Economist Impact, in addition to holding meetings with a number of prominent American companies in a number of priority sectors. The visit aimed to promote investment opportunities in Bahrain in the American market. In light of the visit, the Minister of Sustainable Development confirmed that the United States is regarded one of the priority markets to promote the Kingdom of Bahrain's strategic location, advanced legislative system, and competent workforce. She noted the established strategic and commercial relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States, and explained that the two countries signed a number of pivotal agreements aimed at strengthening multilateral cooperation. The Minister joined a panel discussion in New York that included the participation of representatives of 12 major financial institutions, which which highlighted the best practices adopted by financial institutions. Senior officials of the Economic Development Board also participated in various discussion sessions. The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Jum'a, received the Director General of the Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States, Dr. Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Asmi. The Minister commended the Bureau's role and various educational initiatives. For his part, Dr. Al Asmi commended Bahrain's cooperation with the Bureau and its various activities. He highlighted the Bureau's plans to implement educational initiatives in the Kingdom of Bahrain during the upcoming academic year. 
The Kingdom of Bahrain chaired the Arab side in the 20th session of the Arab-African Partnership Coordination Committee at the senior officials level, which was held at the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Ambassador Fatma Abdullah Vaan, Director General of International Cooperation at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, highlighted the significance of the outcomes of the 33rd Arab Summit, Bahrain Summit, and the initiatives proposed by the Kingdom of Bahrain, which were adopted by the summit. These initiatives aim to address key issues for regional stability and development, including the call for an international peace conference on the Middle East under the auspices of the United Nations, as stated in the Bahrain Declaration. The Director General reaffirmed Arab support for the efforts of African nations towards achieving greater development and prosperity for the people of the African continent. The chairman of the Sunni Endowment Council, Dr. Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed bin Fatais Al Hajri, launched an inspection campaign to follow up on the administration's preparations for Eid al Adha in Bahrain's governorates. Al Hajri stressed the readiness of receiving worshippers on Eid al Adha, stressing the need to create places in a way befitting the occasion and provide all comfort and safety for the worshippers. He thanked all collaborators, including government, private, and volunteer teams for their continuous efforts in providing a safe and appropriate environment for this occasion. The inspection comes within the framework of the Sunni Endowment Council's keenness to follow up and evaluate the preparations to ensure the best services to the worshippers during the performance of their rituals. The head of the Kingdom of Bahrain's Hajj delegation, Sheikh Adnan al Qatan, praised the services and tremendous efforts provided by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques and with the support of the Saudi Crown Prince in servicing the pilgrims of Mecca, praising the role of the Supreme Hajj Committee and the Saudi Ministry of Hajj, stressing that the Kingdom of Bahrain always cooperates with Saudi Arabia for a successful and safe Hajj season every year. This came during the annual meeting, which brought together the heads of Hajj delegations from the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council, where al Qatan affirmed that the mission enjoys the support of His Majesty the King and the continuous follow-up of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. al Qatan also stressed that these meetings provide the opportunity to exchange advice, expertise and experiences in Hajj matters, which contributes to providing the best services to pilgrims from the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The Security Committee of Bahrain's Hajj mission announced the completion of wristband distribution to representatives of the Hajj campaigns. The distribution took place at their mission's headquarters in An Nasim, Mecca, following the verification of lists approved by Bahrain's Hajj mission, head of the Security Committee of Bahrain's Hajj mission, Major Mohammed Al Mehaiza stressed the importance of each campaign adhering to the allocated numbers to avoid logistic challenges at the organizational security checkpoints within the holy sites. Major Al Mehaiza commended the cooperation shown by representatives of Bahrain's Hajj campaigns during the annual meeting held at the mission's headquarters. The meeting focused on clarifying and discussing the process of transporting pilgrims between the holy sites of Arafat, Muzdalifa, and Mina. He highlighted that the cooperation and compliance of the Bahraini campaigns with the transport plan are crucial for the success of the transportation process overseen by the Security Committee to ensure the safety and security of the pilgrims during their movement. He added that the meeting outlined the comprehensive plan agreed upon between Bahrain's Hajj mission and Saudi Arabia's security authorities. This plan specifies the routes for the pilgrims, including entry and exit points, the organization of campaign movements, and their directions to the holy sites train stations. Hajj pilgrims began arriving in Mina on Friday, the eighth day of the Hijjah, to spend the day of Tarwiyah, quenching the thirst, to worship God, petitioning Him for acceptance and forgiveness. Pilgrims who have fulfilled Umrah start Ihram, a sacred state which a Muslim must enter to start Hajj rituals, where they are whether inside or outside Mecca, and remain there until after sunrise on the ninth of the Hijjah. Thereafter, they head to stand on Mount Arafat, which marks the climax of the Hajj journey from dawn until sunset. On the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, stay the night in Muzdalifa to spend 10, 11, 12, and 13 of Dhul Hijjah and perform the stoning of the Jamarat ritual. All arrangements have been made for the Hajj pilgrims to perform religious rituals in an atmosphere of spirituality. 
The Hajj Media Forum continues to receive media delegations and visitors amid interactive digital technologies to serve more than 150 local Arab, Islamic and international media outlets and more than 1,500 local and international media professionals during the Hajj season. The forum features the establishment of 11 supportive media zones and an interactive media exhibition highlighting the services provided to the guests of God. The forum, which includes all sectors of the media system in one place, contributes to supporting the media work of all media figures and media outlets and provides modern technologies to achieve more innovation in local and international media coverage during the Hajj season, such as equipments reflecting the major transformation in the services provided to the guests of God.